We are chapter 28 today. Chapter 28 in one word, the tefillah, prayer. We are discussing thoughts. In the thoughts of the individual, that's where you find yourself. Our thoughts are very important because our cogitated, meditated, what the thoughts that we entertain are very important. They're a true reflection of where we're holding. Um, and therefore, and how to deal with them. So we spoke in the previous chapter that when you're dealing in the middle of work or mundane activity and a negative thought comes to you, be happy. Why should you be happy? Because now you can fulfill the mitzvah. You're not doing a mitzvah right now. You're eating, you're working. It's not an, a, an, it's not an inherent mitzvah or not a, as an end in itself mitzvah. It could be a means to an end that for a higher purpose. So therefore, when a negative thought comes to you, now you can do something that's inherently a mitzvah. And what's that? Don't go after what your heart feels because your eyes have led you astray. That's a mitzvah. So therefore, rejoice in doing that. That was the idea that we spoke about. We spoke about that um, not allowing your heart's desire and the, and the desires that you want to be fulfilled, that you can um, um, Im have impulse control over the things that are even permissible. And that is all the idea of not allowing the animal soul to be in control of me. So that's what we spoke about previously. Now we're going to speak about, well, what happens when negative thoughts come to you in the middle of doing a mitzvah, like prayer? You are praying and negative thoughts come into you. So we can't make the argument, well, be happy because now you can do a mitzvah. But I am doing a mitzvah. I'm praying. So I don't, you know, need this other mitzvah. Let me engage in this mitzvah. Um, so the Altarebbe says, first of all, don't be foolish that because you're in the middle of prayer, uh, that now you could take that negative thought and kind of elevate it to its root source, kind of uh, bring out the good that might be in that negative thought in the way it is rooted above. The Altarebbe says, no, no, if you're rooted below, you can't take something and, and lift it and elevate it above to its source. You can't take something negative and, and bring it uh, to its, bear it, its source on it and then make something good out of that negative thought. Only righteous could do that. Only the righteous have that capability of taking a negative thought and elevating it to its root source and making it um, uh, bear its source on it and bring out the good in that negativity. We're not, we're rooted down below. So when the negative thought comes, what should you do? Gather all the strength you have and uh, push it away. Don't let that thought um, master you. You're in the middle of doing a mitzvah prayer. Uh, push it away. So he explains. Um, how, how do you, you know, a person, a person can make a mistake and think, I'm in the middle of praying to God, focused on my connection to God, and these extraneous negative thoughts come into my head. Obviously, my prayers aren't valuable. And the author of it says, actually, that is a trick to kind of bring down your commitment and your fervor in your prayer, because it is quite the opposite. The fact that negative thoughts come into you when you are praying is precisely because we have a battle going on over here between your holy side that wants to connect to God to pray and your non-holy side, the animal soul, that wants to derail that. And the proof is, take it from a, a wrestling match. What happens when you're in a wrestling match and 
one person all of a sudden gets a little stronger in the moment. They get a, a, a surge of energy and they battle back stronger. What does that do to the opponent? It creates also a surge of energy in them to be able to fight back, right? All of a sudden the adrenaline kicks in more because there's a bigger fight now. So what does that mean? It means simply that when we are praying, the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, doesn't like the fact that you are praying, that you are connecting to God. So it wants to derail it. So it add, gets extra energy to try to derail you. So it's going to bring you now a more uh, devious kind of negative thought. Because think about it. When you are praying and your mind has kind of gone adrift, your evil inclination doesn't have to work on you. <laughs> You're adrift, right? Your mind has gone adrift. But when you're really focused, so remember, we're not righteous. The righteous, completely focused, there's only one soul, the godly soul. But for the rest of us, we have the animal soul. So what happens? Now you're fighting hard in your prayers. So the other combatant is going to work harder in a more devious manner to try to bring you down so that you wouldn't focus in your prayers. When we have that understanding, then first of all, we understand, oh, actually my prayer is more precious because my evil inclination is working over time to try to bring me down because I am focused in my prayer. Again, when you're not focused and your mind just goes adrift, right? you're on an autopilot saying words, then you don't have these negative thoughts coming in. <laughs> Right, but the more you're focused, the more there the negative thoughts become stronger, just to try to bring you down. Say, oh my gosh, then what's the point? Well, that is the point. The point is that when those negative thoughts come in, push them away with an awareness that this is extraneous to me, with an awareness that this is my evil inclination is trying to bring me down and to, to devalue my prayers when indeed my prayers are really valuable, really important. And therefore, just gather your strength to gather the strength to, um, to, to overcome that. The Alter Rebbe gives a metaphor. Imagine that you're praying and there's this heathen pagan who is disrupting you in your prayers and the only reason they're doing it is because what you're praying to god and making fun of your prayers to god what would you do when you're in the middle of prayer so you can't talk to the person right well you're not going to reason with the person because you know that this person's not like say hey what's this prayer about no 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 not 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 curious and wants to find out we're talking about a real non-believer a pagan so it's trying to disrupt you. And you're in the middle of the Amida. So you, you're, your feet are together, you can't move, you're standing before God. What do you do? Very simple. Don't pay attention to, to it. As if it doesn't, if that as if that person doesn't exist. Again, it is a metaphor to bring out the idea that we're talking about this person who is totally trying to derail you, totally making you know fun of the fact that you're praying to God and you're with your feet together in the Amida, so you can't move from there. The only thing you do is continue your prayers as if, as best as you can, as if that person doesn't exist. Because the moment you give that person space, then uh, you're going to lose your concentration. You're going to lose your connection in your prayer. So don't give that person any space in your head that you are totally um, working harder over time to overcome so you can be focused on your prayers. Not in spite of that person, but recognizing that that person is like, you know, well, that person is within me. It's called the eight Sahara, the evil inclination that comes from the animal soul. And all it wants to do is derail me. So when I have that awareness, all I do is don't pay attention to it, make it as if it doesn't exist, and allow my godly soul to shine, 
to connect, to be engaged in my prayers. What happens, the author never concludes, what happens if you're not capable of like being focused? Like it's so hard. And sometimes it is right, for me. Sometimes it's just, it, it, you know, it, it's hard to be so focused and not to uh, allow the turbulent waters of gushing in your head of stupidities and foolishness that comes from the Yetzirah. As a result, the fact that we recognize it and, and that's coming from there, then that's so crucial. And sometimes what we need to do is just beseech God, have compassion on me, that I could now pray properly. Give me the strength, give me the wherewithal that I could focus in my prayers and not allow these negative thoughts come into my, uh, take over my head. Coming into your head, remember? They will, they will but not to allow it, right? Just like that heathen, that, you know, pagan who is, you know, uh, making fun of you while you're praying. So not going to stop. Well, it might stop after a certain time that you recognize it's not going to allow, but actually going to try harder and harder with a deeper and more profound or more, you know, devious manner. What do we do? Don't pay attention. If it's so difficult, ask God for compassion on my soul. God can have the compassion that will give us the capability um, that we will be able to not allow these negative thoughts to be entertained, to be bombarding us. Bombarding they will, but not to be entertained. That's chapter 28, powerful idea. So the example here is, of course, a prayer, and that would be that's the best example of where negative thoughts, you know, when you're really trying to pray and you're focused, will, you know, enter um, and try to take you over. But of course, it's anytime you're doing a mitzvah. Um, that's it, folks. That's something to live with. Sigalit. Sherry, Mike Lozata, Susanna from Miami, Tim from Texas, Hassan from Canada. Welcome. Um, uh, Jane from the Illinois area, Lawrence uh, says the sim just relax, chill. And do not worry about it. No. You got, remember you're praying. You need focus in your prayer. If you were, you know, doing something else. So to focus that you're not allowed that to be derailed by any negativity. So you can't just chill. You got to like, with more fervor, focus on your davening. On your prayers. Uh, it's the opposite. If you just chill, and you know, okay, so he's saying whatever he's saying. You're giving, you're going to give it space. But if you work harder to focus on your prayers as if that person's not there, so it's going to be a greater passion, actually, not chill. Chill is not Hasidic. Chill is like cool and cold. We have to be warm. We have to be warm to God, not cold to God. We have to be warm to prayers, not cold. Silas from Brazil, Brian. Kavana, exactly. Okay, thank you everybody for sharing. Susan from Scranton. Very good example, Sigalit. Like exercise, the more you exercise, the muscles hurt. <laughs> so here also you're gonna exercise your focus 
I don't know if it'll hurt, but it'll, it'll, it's strenuous. You're, there's a, a greater strain, in a sense, uh, in the passion, in the focus. Tony from Costa Rica, Karen from LA, Stephanie from Bloomington, Illinois, John Malin from, from, oh, I forgot now. Eleanor from Norway, yeah, from Mexico, from Mexico. Honey from UK, Margot. Are the thoughts from the external or part of the internal makeup? Uh, um, yes and no. I mean, the eight Sahara is evil inclination, part of the animal soul is from within, but in this, but in a sense, it's from without. In, in that it's not the real me. So I have to let in the negativity. The Yetzirah is working hard to let it in, but it's something extraneous ultimately from us. Right, if you ignore the negative thoughts, pushing them away and ignore is in a similar way, the same. Hmm. How to think about that? Good point, Mark Rosata. Um, in, in a way, it's the same thing because it's something trying to enter the negative thought, right? So ignoring is, in a sense, pushing them away. I, I, I don't know if it's just the semantics. I have to think about that. Um, good point. Julie. Um, thank you, David from Long Long Island, Ahmad. Thank you, Elaine, Georgia. Thank you, Diana, for sharing. Saying that there's many instances throughout her day that you can use this. Nelly from Florida, Catherine from Orange Beach, Alabama. All right, Alice from Baltimore. Okay, Robert and Sandy from Michigan on Instagram. Uh, Timothy, I don't know if I got that right. Francis from Berlin. Patricia and Helen. Okay. All right, folks. Fair Shabbos. Lots to do. Thank you for joining. A reminder that you can get a one minute synopsis of Tanya on Tanya Rabbi on Instagram, on LinkedIn, Twitter. Please go there and um, spread the word. As spreading the word here by sharing, very important. Please share the Alter Rebbe's teachings. Um, many of you thank me. The greatest thanks is pay it forward. Share it with someone else. Share it literally. It's an easy thing just to share here on Facebook or, or Instagram. I don't know how Instagram works exactly. But, um, and, of course, if you can share literally the teaching with somebody, that's even more amazing. But sharing is caring, and we have to care, and we have to change the world, and Tanya is a key element in doing that. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zerich and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you. Tanya, have a wonderful day, a good Erev Shabbos, and a wonderful, meaningful, great Shabbos. Shabbos Mevorchim, the month of Adar, is coming. Well, we're going to have full of joy.